easy, easy. All right, welcome everybody to Farm Talk Friday. It is Friday, Friday. November 18th, 2022. I'm Ken Jordan. This is my beautiful wife, Giovanna. Hello. That looks very fluorescent. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, we're here at the Green Wave House. Uh, there's our two chicken tractors. Uh, where's my finger? Hi to whoever popped on. There's my finger. Yeah, it's better if I do the finger. Yeah, there's our little chicken tractor <laughs> and our big one with our five beautiful chickens. They're all equally beautiful. That's right. That's Aww. right. <laughs> I don't want to play any favorites. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to say that Crema is smaller than her sisters now. Well, Pecan, Pecan looks guys. giant. Pecan <laughs> looks like a giant chicken for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But even Butterscotch, like Butterscotch and Pecan look very similar now because yeah. Pecan or Butterscotch got speckles somehow in the last couple of months. And they're like much bigger than Crema. So when we got them, they were all the same size, and I thought they were already full grown. But now, now, creme is small. I don't know what's happening. We don't know, but they are just delivering the most amazing eggs. Yeah. So consistently, it's just it's like a dream. You know, you have the dream, like, hey, we want to get our own chickens and have our own <laughs> eggs. And we feed them like great food and we know it's the healthiest eggs. And sure, sometimes they die and there's problems, but right now it's going so yeah. well. It's going I know. Wade, so... anyway, yeah. way in here. We have tons of wood actually in here, but it's over there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Yeah, yesterday... what happened what happened on the farm? <laughs> was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday, no yesterday I was running our new um, super powerful battery operated uh, weed whacker out here. They're called a Motogurania. Um, and, you know, weed whackers are a thing here. Everyone around us, all, they all have weed whackers. You hear weed whackers like crazy, but you don't hear ours because ours is electric. Anyway, we have this new one that's like, as strong as a 30 cc gas powered one. So it's a lot of fun to use, but yeah, I'm not that great on it. I don't have, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with the, the, the reach of it and the, the range. I'm not comfortable with the range of it. Uh, so anyway, I was chopping some grass yesterday and all of a sudden I just, you know, swept one way and chopped like a water line and water starts gushing out, and uh, anyway. Uh, Ken is like running yeah. and calling out to people, emergency, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that much of an emergency, so we just, uh, we turned off the valve that fed that line and uh, got it repaired pretty quickly, actually, so. Good job, Ken. Yeah, well. Well. Yeah. <laughs> What else is going on, honey? Well, this week uh, we have lots of star fruit coming in. Uh, we apparently have more corn. I just, like, I don't have a lot of high hopes for the corn. I feel like well, the no, animals know no. when it's going to, like, when it's ready, and then they get it before we do. Yes, we have high hopes for animals <laughs> yeah. eating corn. Animals will have a great corn <laughs> dinner. Yeah, we, we here at Green Wave House, we like to feed... The wild animals corn. Yes. Organic corn. Um, okay, anyway. but are we getting um, are we getting the carambola dulces? Are we getting the sweet no. star fruit yet? No, not yet. They kind of they kind of fruit at different times. Yeah, no, we have lots of the sour ones. Yeah. Um, but those are good too. And uh, most people that know star fruit know the really um, not it's not bitter, the sour the more sour yeah. one. Yeah, some people don't even know that the sweet variety exists. Yeah, it's a lighter colored fruit, but it's the same shape, same size, basically. But man, the sweet ones are so, so good. good. They're like beyond belief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have um, 
a house uh, keeper that did not believe us that there was a sweet variety. <laughs> funny yeah. um yeah so crops papaya we just planted some more and uh two of them at least got taken out by ants they might come back but um that was a bummer <laughs> so here here like in costa rica and on our farm um, i'm pretty convinced that spiders and ants are the ones ruling the world and uh yeah the ants the leaf cutters, they just, they get things like in the middle of the night, you wouldn't know. If you're an ant lover, Costa Rica is for you. That's right. Uh, really just... <laughs> no. And they're funny because you always see, they're really, you know, they're great workers. And so you always see them, they make a line, they're always carrying leaves, because that's what they do is they cut leaves. But you don't always know where, like they're getting their leaves from. And so sometimes you're just like, oh, hey, cute, you guys, you're doing your good work, woohoo. But really what they're doing is they're destroying something close by yeah. and, um, and you're just not noticing what it is. And you know, unless it's precious to you, then, um, then it kind of doesn't matter. But it's like, oh man, you guys could take anything you wanted, but you took the new papayas, why? Yeah. Not the fruit, but just like, you know, the trees were like this big. And so it's kind of devastating to them when the leaves are You different. know, we, we can protect the trees from ants. We, we have no, methods. We just need to think about it. And yeah. it's only the leaf cutter ants that are doing that. <laughs> the, the, there's so many different ants and they all have different jobs. Some of them are scavengers. Some of them are like army invader ants. Yeah, and the fire ants. And the fire ants that just seem to want to kill you. <laughs> Some of them, we don't know what their jobs are. Yeah. They're just there. Yeah, there's some that are um, here at the Green Wave House studio that, like, if you look at them, they're kind of like translucent, long bumblebee ants. But yeah. They're not that big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But then you just go 10 minutes down the road and at Anamaya, which is a yoga retreat center that's kind of like like a sister property to uh, Rancho Delicioso, our eco village, um, they have large bumblebee ants that look like you don't want them biting you. Like, I'm not sure if, I don't know if anyone's ever been bit by them because you see them and you're like, ooh, like I need to stay away from that. Um, but they're beautiful. But I, I wonder, it's like, I wonder what that bite feels like. And then what is the bite in comparison to the bullet ant? Oh yeah, the bullet ant. The bullet, uh, there are bullet ants here in Costa Rica. And, Hi, Julian. Uh, not right here where we live, thank God, but they're in a lot of parts of Costa Rica. And they're giant ants. And apparently getting bitten by one is like being shot with <laughs> By a bullet, <laughs> yeah. With a bullet, anyway. So last year, Ken helped out our international um, man of mystery friend. That's what we call him, right? Simon. Yes. Well, yes, yeah, Simon. Solar Simon. Uh, also, Leopard Simon. No, not Leopard. Jaguar. Jaguar, Jaguar, Jaguar Simon. <laughs> um. Yes, the Jaguar Corridor Project or the Jaguar Project. Anyway, Simon's awesome. And so yeah, as part was, of his project, he was reforesting. He was reforesting and Ken went to help him out yeah. and Ken's back started hurting after a couple hours of digging holes or putting whatever it is that you were doing. Yeah, planting um, little little trees, yeah. Yeah, and um, so he laid down and, uh, and then, I guess you should tell the story, I wasn't there. Yeah, well, <laughs> I laid down and then, you know, I rested and I got back. And then later on, uh, <laughs> Simon, we were sitting and he saw an ant. Oh yeah, look, a bullet ant right now. I'm like, oh wow, that's a bullet ant. I haven't seen one. He's like, yeah, they're all over here. <laughs> all yeah. over where I'd just been laying down. <laughs> <laughs> so the bullet ants, they, uh, they work by themselves. So, and maybe they're not, so, they're not so interested in humans. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Like, what do uh, they do? Do you know? I don't know. But yeah, they'll only bite you if you bother them. You step <laughs> yeah, on you them or something. Yeah, if you lay down on them because yeah. your back oh. hurts. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's... Well, I think you should talk well, about your we are transition. Starting to come out of the rainy season. We've been having some sun. It was pretty hot today. And um, uh, which is 
nice, you know, it's always, you know, by the end of the rainy season, you're, you're sick of the rain. And by yeah. the end of the dry season, <laughs> you're like, bring it on. Yeah. You're sick, of, you're sick of the dust and the heat, you know, but the thing you tend to forget about is when the dry season comes or when the rainy season goes away, the, the, the skies light up because the skies are clear now. You can see the stars again, which is amazing. So nice. So we've been seeing amazing Hi, stars Charlie. the last couple of nights. Yeah, that's been really beautiful. And then to see even like the full moon is nice because um, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, it's just behind clouds and so it's really nebulous. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. And Mars, Mars has been looking really bright lately. Yeah, what's the, the Jupiter? One yeah, Jupiter's been directly <laughs> overhead and then going down that. Anyway, it's been super bright and amazing. Yeah. So animals, um, mm -hmm. do you have any animal stories this week? Well, what about those little blue, oh, yeah. those little blue birds? We're going to post that. I think I said last week I was going to post some pictures of something. I didn't do it. But Giovanna Oops. got some amazing photos of these little blue birds. I think Joaquin knows what they are. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're, they're like light blue. Like, yeah. Like this. Um, yeah, they're kind of like two-tone like this, but they're small. They're super small. But they make a noise that, you know, their chirp or their song or whatever it is that they're doing, the, the noise that they're making is different than what we normally hear. So the first time I saw them was a few weeks ago. So they're traveling from somewhere. And, uh, and I'm like, what is that? And I saw them and they come really, they, for some reason, they like one of the um, trees that's close to our patio. And so they're very close. Um, but, you know, if you go out there to try and take a picture like they'll fly away so this time I was able to grab our animal taking camera and then I just kind of shot through the screen but somehow it works how come it doesn't show the screen in the photos when you do that well <laughs> <What>? <laughs> well if you're Ken is an award-winning <laughs> photographer from high school oh, yeah, when I was in high school <laughs> uh, if you zoom in and you're actually whatever your image is is in between the the screens actually you could block the image with the screen but you but it's out of focus yeah but anyway so seems um, magical to yeah me. it seems magical but anyways i got i got a good shot this time so we can post that for everyone um so we've been seeing them and then the golden orioles which is nice uh and then these are from here, but the red-headed um, woodpecker was making a whole bunch of noise and we don't, you know, it's like I, I see them sometimes, but they're usually in the quebrada, in the ravine, and um, and this we, one was making a ton of noise. So I, we, we have photos of, of that yeah. guy up there in we our do. animales de Costa Rica. Something. Yeah. I don't know if those are all posted on the page. Okay. We'll I think those it. are like internal not on purpose I've, I've posted some over the last we gotta get those up there we do but anyway that was exciting cause it's super bright red and I, I didn't recognize the sound and so I ran out and I was asking our land manager like do you hear that can you see it and then we, we saw it like through the trees in the ravine so that was awesome and then um, two more things that I have. So uh, we have these Anonas and I keep bringing this up and I feel like this is week three of like, we have Anonas coming and they're super hard. I don't know when they're gonna be ready. Uh, and Jason, who works for us, our land manager, he, um, he said, hey, yeah, you know, the squirrels really like these. And I said, what? Cause he used a word that I wasn't familiar with. And um, sometimes like the, the terms are different in Nicaragua and Costa Rica. So I didn't know what he was talking about. And he's like, right there. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on, you know, I told him like the English word for it. And um, so we were trying to teach each other, but uh, yeah, I don't know when these anonas are gonna get ready. So anonas are a fruit. And so are you saying that maybe the squirrels no. eat them when they're ripe and that's why we never, we only see hard ones? No. No. No, no. But he, I think he was just saying like, hey, you better watch this because, hey, look, there's squirrels right over there now, you know, like they're going to be watching. Like, I mean, the animals, the animals know. I mean, yeah. they, you know, they have their little routes and like that's their job is to like go through the forest 
and keep track of what's going to be ripe. I mean, that's what it seems like with our corn. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, and then kind of the last thing. I did want to talk about hibiscus burlesque. I don't know if anyone saw that move last week, but I'll, I'll get back to that later. Maybe in a more permaculture pinup focused uh, Farm Talk Friday next week. Okay. But the last thing I have, do you remember I told you about the screaming beetle? I remember. So we had, we have this spider. I don't know what kind of a spider it is, but it's kind of like, I would call it a pumpkin spider. Um, and so it's kind of fat, it has a fat body. And um, it, it hangs off of like a single thread. It doesn't seem to make a web, I don't know. I mean, it has, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't make the most elaborate of spider webs, this pumpkin spider. Anyway, a little beetle, like a little tiny June bug, um, got caught in its string. And I did see the spider trying to eat it. And, you know, like, you're not really supposed to interfere in that sort of thing. And so I was like, hey, good job, spider. Good for you. Wow, look at what a meal. It's like half your size. Um, so in the morning, the spider had not finished the beetle, had not even been able to successfully kill it. I think the beetle had retracted its head into its shell. And so there was a bunch of like webby stuff on the top of the shell. And this little beetle was like making noise. And I was like, oh man, I'm like, I'm not really, I don't know if I should interfere with this, but I have my own techniques of how I ask permission spiritually. And so I felt that I had permission from both the spider and the beetle to move it. And I um, go, you know, I just like, I didn't, I'm so much better with spiders now than I used to be, but I still don't want to like handle spiders or get one on me on purpose yet. Um, so I was like, well, I'm going to get like a little stick and try to get it off, you know, that way. So I go, I get the stick and I'm trying to get it off and spider webs are super strong. So I'm having a hard time and this poor little beetle is like on a um, bungee jumping cord and he's like being swung on a swing both directions and spinning really fast and it's screaming. This mm -hmm. beetle is screaming, this like noise. <laughs> And I was horrified and wondering if I should go in with my hand, but I'm like, no, no, certainly this time I'm going to be able to get it with the stick. And it took, it took longer than I wanted it to, like a painful minute for, of spinning and swinging for this poor little beetle. And it was so distressed that it continued to scream as I tried to find it a, um, a new home. But finally it like settled down. I put it in one place and then it was still kind of like, eh. And so I went and got it and then I put it into our um, flower planter, which was like a much nicer, more beautiful spot for it. And I haven't seen it. So good luck, beetle. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Vittis is on, the, <laughs> on our farm talk Friday. Mr. Vittis, good to see you. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. You yeah. Anything else? Anything? No, that's it. Except, um, so Alicia, you saved, you saved, I see your... <laughs> you did save the beetle. That is the I key did thing. save the beetle. All right. So, uh, thank you so much. We'll be back next Friday for Farm Talk Friday. That's right. For my beautiful wife, Giovanna M. Ken Jordan. Ciao. This <laughs> is coming to you live from the Greenway House. <laughs> Goodbye. Costa Rica. Uh,